We've always had room in our hearts for film and TV Not just on Netflix, but tape and disc and theaters Oh, so God forbid that they take it all away And leave us nothing to broadcast to loyal listeners We'll binge watch every single movie So you don't have to, what else are we here for? Coming to you every week, listen to us while you're busy Luckily, we forgot to grow up. Hey, everybody, it's Craig. Hey, it's Scott. Hey, it's Andrew. Welcome to episode number 47 of the Forgot to Grow Up podcast. On this week's episode, we are going to talk about summer movies because, as most of you are probably aware, or some of you poor Americans are aware, uh, summer's over or really close. When this episode comes out, the X in Toronto is done. Like, yeah. French sand, yeah. It's sad. <laughs> Very sad. And that's why we're talking about these movies. Exactly. <laughs> then we're going to talk about what we watched this week, which I can say my list holds a fancy little Easter egg that uh, Scott and Andrew are, are going to be excited about. But we'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'll let them spend the entire episode wondering exactly what it is that I could watch that could possibly be this noteworthy. Um, and then we'll go to bed because it's hot. Uh, <laughs> summer movies. Summer Peace movies. be with you. Who wants it and with your spirit? How many? <laughs> who wants to talk about summer movies? There's lots of su- well. There's, well, yeah. there's some. Maybe we should talk movies? about the definition. Maybe we should talk about the definition yeah. that we're going to go by. Our definition, yeah. yeah. If it doesn't remind you of summer, it's not a summer movie. Yeah, that's definitely if one thing. When you think about the movie, you don't go, "Yeah, that was a summer movie." Then it's not a summer movie. Yeah, I kind of agree with that, and and it's also like it's not just because it took place during the summer like we mentioned before it has to have some kind of theme that's related to summer like the story has to involve the fact that it's summer as like either a setting or a theme of some kind i at least in my opinion i don't know both that's how you guys feel the same that yeah like it has to give some kind of like that's make you nostalgic for your summer that is just now past it's gone away super depressing poor people before the fall comes and then winter six months of winter (laughs) well for some of us at least (laughs) yeah not all of us live that far north fuck (laughs) that (sighs) miss niagara every week in winter anyway it's it's wet uh, here it's not it's not all (laughs) all sunshine and rainbows down here but anyway that's not what we're we're not gonna talk weather yeah we're talking about other podcasts (laughs) yeah What's the first uh, summer movie that comes to either your guys' mind? Like, when you think summer movie. Oh, you open the can of worms, Scott. You, you open the can of dirty worms. Dirty Dancing. Obviously Dirty Dancing. Obviously. The number one greatest movie of all time. I've never seen it. <coughs> Neither have I. <laughs> I was just going along with it. I watched it once, like, ten years ago. That's, that's, okay. that's the one where Jerry Erbach puts Baby in the corner. Puts baby in the corner, yep. The only reason I actually know that that's from that movie is because of John Mulaney. He is a cinematic genius. Genius. Jerry Orbach or... No, John John Mulaney, Mulaney, obviously. (laughs) John John Mulaney (laughs) is the, for those who don't know, is the reason why we have a segment called Hey Listen Hollywood. In a very indirect way. Yeah, I was unaware of that at the time well, when we named it. Now, <laughs> it's not, it would. now well, it's, it's not, that's not why. It's that he, he did the, uh, the bit about pitching a movie. And that, I believe that kind of gave our, uh, uh, gave way to the commish, which was the first I think movie so. pitch we wrote that we didn't really write. And the first movie pitch we talked about <laughs> on here. Yeah. That's true. That is true. It's been so long. I know. I know. For so 40, long. 47 episodes. But we're talking about summer movies. So Dirty Dancing, yeah. clearly the most summer movie of all time. The most. Uh, Moving on. Yeah. yeah thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, I am not sure. I don't know what you guys want me to say. Things are, like, <laughs> things are starting to fall apart real early. Obviously, the first summer movie that comes to mind for me is Wet Hot American Summer. Mostly because yes. it has the name in it, it and partially because i heard jane by jefferson airplane on some hold music this week and it got me really the irony psyched to do this episode of the podcast so thank you city of thorold 
<laughs> Shout out. Sponsor us. City of the world. <laughs> Live here. Please, seriously, we don't have anybody here. <laughs> so, Wet Hot American uh, Summer. Yeah, you guys can go off on that one. you've never <laughs> seen Wet Hot American Summer, which disappoints me. I've watched me. part of the, like, reboot show. Well, yeah, um, there, that's the thing with Wet Hot American Summer, is that there's Wet Hot American Summer, and then yeah. there's First Day of Camp, which is the prequel that happened, that was made 15 years later. And then there's yeah, the so I think I saw that one. Yeah, then there's the sequel ten years later, which take place takes place ten years after the last day of camp. So ten years after the movie is set, but which is the best part because the the prequel they look old as fuck, and then the ten years later they look arguably better in some cases. <laughs> I think that was probably part of the idea, and except probably. except Bradley Cooper with his uh, plastic surgery. He had a he had a deviated septum. Yeah, he so did. They had to and fix it, and he looks with Adam suspiciously Scott. like Adam Scott. <laughs> Sounds like him yeah, too. Exactly. It must have been. It must have been he the was nasal. Credited as Adam Scott in the credit. Like I don't. I don't know. But uh, it was definitely Bradley Cooper. It, it had to be. It was his character. Uh, recasting is not a thing in this universe. No. <laughs> no. At, and recasting for the best reason, I think. Besides, we can't afford, nor can we fit around Bradley Cooper's schedule. It was more. We'll just write this in. It's it'll be fun. It's, Adam Scott's it's hilarious. That way. It is way funnier that way. <laughs> uh, I still I like that's that's the summer movie you have to watch, Scott. And see, you saying that is probably why I haven't watched it yet. I have such resistance to people telling me to do stuff I have to. <laughs> <laughs> but we've been doing that for months. Yeah, and how many of those things have I watched? Exactly <laughs> zero. <laughs> Sorry, you watched I, Big Mouth. I wait, one. You watched I, Big two. Mouth. I watched Big Mouth, and I watched one of the John Mulaney specials. Right, right. I forgot about so that. So two. I watched Kid Gorgeous. That was him, right? Yeah, that one was really good, though. That you was got the right one? That was, yeah. that's, that's the one with the horse in the hospital. Yep. Um, I don't know. There's so much good stuff about What Hot American Summer. Um, the, the everything about it. Uh... <laughs> Andrew, do you have anything to add before I sound like I'm gonna die here? No, I want I want to keep hearing. I want to hear you talk about it more. Keep you just trying to come up with more things to say besides. Yeah, it's good. I like it. Well, it's got yep. it's, it's got everybody. <laughs> Poke the fire. It's got it's got everybody in it. Um, now I'm not gonna be able to remember anybody's names. It's got H. John Benjamin as a can of vegetables, which you find out why he's a can of vegetables in the prequel. Yes. And then it's got Christopher Maloney as Gene, the awesome cook um yep. it's got who's super weird he fucks a fridge yes he does but and, and he says a lot of really weird things and then his his like helper in the kitchen hears him but he says something else that sounds completely different <laughs> yeah what'd you just say <laughs> and then calls him on it at the end be like we know you what you're doing just just be you and the whole movie takes place within one day yep and as the last day of camp for obviously and um, obviously obviously that's see i always confuse first day of camp is the one with um david hyde pierce and they save the camp from the uh um they 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 say they save the camp from the from skylab or is that is that the movie Oh man, that's I always get them I think confused. That's Skylab. Sky Skylab is the one. Skylab, that's a meteor, right? That, well, that, that was the, the yeah, th- that was the one with that's the, the movie. science kids. Okay, that's the movie. Yeah. That's then, the movie cuz that cuz that also has the kid from um or not the kid, the guy f- who owns the comic book store in uh, Big Bang Theory who does like the super weird Right. special talent. Yes, the computer. And it was like, "Oh shit." Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then first, yeah, where, first <laughs> where he has like four buttons and then it all comes out. Yeah. And first day of camp is, um, is the one with, with Chris Pine and Ronald Reagan. And they're good. It's the, yeah. it's the toxic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm remembering. Cause that, cause camp. he fall. Yeah. Cause he falls into the, that. In, in, and then they want to, they want to blow it up. Well, they have to take it off the map. Yeah. And so so Ronald Reagan shows and that, up. And that's when Chris, Chris Pine plays phenomenal songs about 
taking it higher and higher. higher. <laughs> yep. And then get shot. Me the fever. And falls off the roof. And then you yep. find out ten years later that he's still alive. He's he was a super super spy. Yep. Or you know, he's just like a cyborg, isn't he? <laughs> yes, yes. Or uh, well, and then you got first day of camp has um oh, what's his name? John Ham. <laughs> John Ham as, as the Falcon. As the Falcon. Where the instructions are in the usual place, right on top of the uh, of the payphone, and it says "Top Secret" on it. And then it turns out that he's been working <laughs> with Chris Maloney the entire time because they knew each other, and like he's on the good side. It's confusing. It's it's an interesting movie. It's a TV show. And TV show again. And, and another TV show again. It's been a while since I watched uh, 10 years later, though. I figured you guys would have watched those pr- to prep for this week. That one's got uh, that one's got Alyssa Milano, who ends up being the... Uh, who's the, 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 the psycho the, nanny? Yeah, the psycho nanny. That was what it was. I was going to say baby. Who they murder? <laughs> exactly. Oh. And then they're super awkward about the fact that they had to bury her body parts in different places. and. <laughs> They have a kid, okay? Yeah. Bradley Cooper, obviously. And uh, what's his name? Michael Ian Black. Yep. They have a kid together. And Michael Ian Black is super paranoid about Alyssa Milano. Yep. But Alyssa Milano. I, <laughs> I seem to have run out of things to say, and if no one else is going to jump in, then I'm going to switch right over to my next movie. Okay. Is this an unexpected no, one? No, it's not unexpected. It's it's okay. National Lampoon Summer Vacation. There we it's, go. I figured yeah, that was, was going to be at the top. It's, it's yeah. the second best summer movie, obviously. Not now. Yes. Not to be confused with the the remake. I don't know if either of you guys have seen the remake. Is that the one with Ed Helms? Yeah, that's the one with Ed Helms. I have not seen. I'm it. aware of it. it I've never seen uh, it. See, okay. So, Vacation's good. It's got Chevy Chase and and Anthony Michael Hall and. Yeah, I remember so watching that one when I was yeah. really young. Like, I couldn't tell you any details about it. Randy Quaid. They're on, like, a road trip, too. Yeah, well, they're going to Wally World, which is in California. So they're leaving from Chicago and driving to Wally World, which is Disney World in this universe. Yeah. And then they and they have a ton of misadventures along the way. Of course. Obviously. <laughs> they stop in St. Louis and get their tires removed because they're driving through the wrong part of town. Um, they end up stopping at... Um, at, at his wife's cousin's place in uh, the middle of nowhere, which is where R- Randy Quaid lives, and they have to take her. Uh, I feel like that's that's truthful about today. Yes, and they take her her uh, her aunt with them, and she dies along the way. So then okay. they just drop her off at her son's house, uh, who lives in Phoenix, and it's raining. Um, I think it was Phoenix. I can't remember. It's been a, sounds about it, right. It it it. it it's not it's not memorable that particular part of the movie. And then they get to Wally World and it's closed. So then they take um oh, John Candy hostage cuz he's a security guard and it makes him take him on all the rides. And then the movie ends. <laughs> so the and, and it starts off with like he's supposed to have this really nice station wagon but they give him this the family truckster which is green and has like wood paneling all over it and it's just yeah, just yeah. crap ooh, ooh. Yeah. talk dirty to me <laughs> and it falls <laughs> apart i love wood paneling it falls apart across <laughs> across the course of the trip obviously uh obviously that's the thing i remember about this movie is just the car yep. and how shitty the it car was. well they take <laughs> it off they take it off uh <laughs> off a road that says road close yeah. bridge out and then they end up like jumping it and absolutely destroying it um yeah that movie it's it's so good <laughs> um but vacation starts out kind of the same way uh the idea is that ed helms is rusty who's the son in the original vacation movie and so he's, okay. he remembers somehow that it was a really good vacation not not sure yeah yeah not sure how he got okay. that but he clearly did not watch the movie no, he needs to and uh and so they're gonna go on they're gonna go on vacation and it starts off with him getting a new car so they can go on the vacation but yeah in in the way that modern cars are it's european and completely unnecessary it's got it looks like two cars to the front end of two cars butted together <laughs> it's got rearview mirrors on both ends, so that if you look at the rearview mirror on the one side, you can't actually see anything because you're looking into the rearview yep. mirror of the other one. 
and just all kinds of, of ridiculous stuff ridiculous. like that. <laughs> Eventually, yeah. uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of parallel, and right at the beginning of the movie, like just before they're getting ready to leave, he says something to the effect of, "No, the vacation will this this vacation will stand alone compared to the other vacation, even though it follows." the same pattern the entire way through <laughs> and so yeah, they do course. crazy things like he can't figure out how to put gas in the stupid thing and uh and they stop at his cousin's house uh who is um uh why can't i remember i don't know thor who plays thor oh chris, oh, Hems- chris, Hemsworth. chris hemsworth. hemsworth yes chris hemsworth is his cousin so they stop there oh. at his house is it is it actually chris yeah, hemsworth no, is. or is it oh yeah like okay. he's actually in the movie. Like the act. Yeah. Like the act. He it's, plays no, himself. No, no, he's he plays the. Okay. okay, yeah, no, it's not his cousin. That was my question. Okay. I was like, is I he? Thought he does was, he play I thought you were. Sword? I thought it was like a. <laughs> I thought it was like a Bradley Cooper implication. No, is no, it no. It was to be uh, Chris Hemsworth, he, but. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Liam. No. <laughs> yeah. no, no. I was I was genuinely curious if it was like Chris Hemsworth, the the human being. No, no, no. As the character. No, no, he's just a he's a cattle farmer in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so they go out there and then they eventually but there's it's just a lot more crude. Like there's one part where they stop to go to hot springs but they get bad directions from the locals and they end up bathing in human sewage, which is just gross. And yeah. then there's a couple other lines that yeah, you know what, I didn't like it as much. But it has Holiday Road by uh by Lindsay Buckingham uh as its theme song, so it it's it's kind of allowed kind of yeah I don't um, know what that song is and yeah it ends up with them going to um an amusement park i can't remember if it's wally world or not it's open but then like it's taken them so long to get there by the time they get to the front of the line for the roller coaster it's, yeah, closed. it's closed and so yeah. they're not gonna be able to ride and then his nemesis or like his his rival from the uh from another airline they're also there because he's a pilot. Um, of course, they're also yeah. there. Spoilers. And so then he, uh, well, yeah, it's it's too late for you if you haven't seen it. And if you're gonna watch a vacation movie, just go watch Vacation. It's so much better. Um, and and so they like jump ahead of the line, so they get on, and then there's a fight, and then they get on the roller coaster, and then it gets stuck midway through the loop. And I'm pretty sure that's how the movie ends. That's so that's again, not as not as exciting as John Candy being held hostage. At no, but it does bring gunpoint. up one question, which is, do you guys have, like, professional work rivals? Like, <laughs> at my workplace? Uh, like, a foe? Not. Like, <laughs> no. An, an arch nemesis? Somebody that like, I really don't like. I can maybe understand. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you I, compete yeah. with... I, I do. Uh, you compete with other barbers. <laughs> but I'm talking about, like, why, why are two pilots fighting against each other? Well, because they, they work for different airlines, and, and Ed Helms works for, a, or Rusty works for, like, a lower-end budget airline. And okay, this other so guy other works for like a, a, like a like bully like a hot, yeah yeah exactly then. that's that's the idea which I don't again okay. I don't like as much as uh, as the the premise behind vacation because it just it it well I mean you you'd have a harder time driving all the way across the United States just to find out that the place isn't open when you get there because now we have the internet so you can check yeah, to see the thinking, hours yeah. and make sure it's not going to be closed when you get there so that's kind of a thing that like can only be done in the original but at the same time it's so much funnier because it fits the character really well because he's not very smart he's very caring but he's a complete idiot and so it it really fits the the character of uh uh, of him to drive all the way across the country only for it to be closed exactly when they get there and then to do something completely ridiculous to get his family like what they're what what he's driven all the way across for similar to christmas vacation where he goes yeah. completely off the deep end because he wants to get them a pool and make have it be the best christmas ever and that's all i have to say about that and that's all i have to say about that which uh, okay that, i always confuse that movie like the the new vacation movie and we're the millers and rv all See, when you were describing time. this, I was Wait, thinking so you about just mash the them, you, <laughs> So you, like, mash them all together in, in your head? In my head sometimes, I'll be like, oh, wait, no, no, that was RV, because I can clearly see Robin Williams doing that. 
or that must be we're the millers we're the millers and vacation really i could see that they're though. really like, I get close that. in my and head they're all like road trippy so it's like oh which one of the antics happened in which one of these movies is <laughs> like well you know damn well it's not rv and well no because that's 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 uh robin williams and i think part of the problem too is that in my head in these two movies robin williams is in both of them well, no jason sudeikis oh. and uh, ed helms look very similar in their yeah. characters oh okay and so yeah, they in a real polo, life and i was like polo wherein like no in this in these suburban partic- dad in these particular yeah. roles they're very very similar uh okay. like the way they look and everything like that um because it, if i had to pick between the two of them jason sudeikis is better but that's maybe that's just me uh, no i support okay, that okay good because ed helms irritates me sometimes yeah, <laughs> I feel, feel like it's because he just he was Andy, opinion, and then everything else. But but Andy's character is ridiculous. Like in the office, is just ridiculous yeah. in other it's, ways it's too. Parkour, there, yeah. exactly. And and the um, the uh, the ringtone when mm-hmm. when Jim hides it in the ceiling and he goes absolutely crazy. Like I just love the yep. really quirky <laughs> bits of his. Character. I actually know that episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, Don't get all office references, but I got that one. That's one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Jim pranks, is is when he hides it, just because of the way Jim's like, "Oh shit, I went way too far with this one." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I've only got one more movie on my list of summer movies. Um, this one came to mind, and I had to make sure that I had the right title for it. Have either of you seen The Way Way Back? Yes, I have. No. I don't recall a whole hell of a Neither lot of it. Neither do I, but I remember watching but it. But I do remember watching it and thinking, this is pretty good. I forget who the main guy is. It's He's the guy with the cool name. Sam Rockwell? He was... That's the guy. Yeah. Steve Carell, Sam Rockwell, and Maya Rudolph are all in uh, The Way Way Back. Plus other people. Do they, do they go through a key change? They go through more than one key change, I'm sure. If that's where the Michael Bolton references are going to end. Apparently, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. I was waiting for you. You haven't to seen Michael Bolton. How am I supposed to live without? How am I supposed to live without these? It's not Valentine's Day yet. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Which will be my excuse until Valentine's, until Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> but it's, it's about Christmas. I it's closer know. to Christmas. It's ten months till Christmas. That's what Valentine's Day means to me. Um, yeah, I seem. I, I remember it being a good movie. Um, I remember recommending it to my brother, and then I remember my mom being mad at me for doing that. Uh, clearly, I forgot something that was in it. Uh, I don't remember what it is that I forgot, seeing as how I forgot it. Of course. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but who else wants to talk? Okay. Andrew, yeah. I'll take it, it over because my, li- my list is about this long. Oh, okay. cool. mine is two-ish. <laughs> Holy shit, I actually nailed it, like, on the screen. That's how long my list is. For so, audio listeners, it was the space about between an his inch. fingers. About <laughs> an inch. It was that long. It was about this much. So, first up on my list, I have the Little Rascals. Because it's just a bunch of fucking kids just wreaking sheer havoc in they're the on, summer. They're, in the, they're on summer vacation. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's, that's why it's for me. Roxy clearly disagrees, but whatever, bitch. I feed you, so you're going to agree with me. That's his dog, by the that's way. That's my dog, by the way, just <laughs> yeah, to clarify. Just, just, just his to girlfriend sure. is not whining in the background. No. No. That'd be it is my dog. Episode, she is though. whining, and I love, I love her more than anything, just so everyone knows. She's just being annoying right now and disagreeing with me about Little Rascals. I love that movie. And just just the idea of a bunch of kids just running around, like creating sheer bedlam. It's 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 what kids do in the summer. Exactly. I remember loving that movie. It's been eighteen years since I've seen it. It ends with a soapbox race, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's about the only thing I remember from that. Because they have I forget what the car is called. I haven't watched it in like fifteen years. But uh, I forget what the car car is called. But the bad guys, two of the bad guys in it, the douchebag bully kids, yeah. they steal it, and then they have to be, like the little rascals have to make their own, and they make it out of like a washing machine and other shit. 
And then there's yeah, some. I don't get where they find all this stuff. Like, I don't know. I don't know how they're such good mechanics. Yeah. That's... Like <laughs> the shit I tried to put together when I was younger, none of that shit went together. <laughs> I assume all issues with my car are the carburetor. All of them. <laughs> the car doesn't have a carburetor. That's the joke. That is the joke, Scott. God damn it. Uh, that's what I was it could be at. the, it could <laughs> be the carburetor. But uh. these kids could build a functioning soapbox car that they could drive on flat terrain, not just downhill. Yeah, it was flat go- terrain. They were more like go karts. A couple of them. Yeah, but. and then the rich guy, I forget his name. He he hooks up with what's her face. Yeah, you're like oh, god damn it. And you the teacher's don't a super remember babe. alfalfa. What'd you say? How could you forget the name Alfalfa? Well, she temporarily... Dar- it, yeah. Not Darla. Yes, it is. Is Darla. it Darla? Yeah. Darla, yeah. Oh, she Darla. she hooks up with the rich guy because oh, he's a dick. Right. And she's like, mm, screw you, Alfalfa. Yeah. I remember that scene. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but know then, why. Uh, God, why do I remember so much about the little <laughs> rascals? <laughs> but, then, but then she finds out that the rich guy's a dick and she goes back to Alfalfa. And that's when the He-Man Woman Hating Haters Club <laughs> lets women in. Oh, those little rascals. <laughs> Do you think that's why, why they, they called, called it Little Rascals? <laughs> that, that's got to be a movie full of people saying the title of the movie. That's probably why I connected so well to it as a younger child. Because you were like, oh, that's what Dude, it's I, called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that dog of mine. <laughs> So next up on my list is another kid's movie, and it's called Recess Schools Out. Right, I forgot that you were going to talk about this. I didn't I'm going to talk about, about that. it. I didn't even think to go that oh, direction. You bet your ass I thought about that, because I love this fucking movie. <laughs> it was a good one, if I'm remembering it correctly. Okay, what happens is schools out. Yep. Okay. All of the kids go to their own individual summer camps. Mikey goes to, like, some performing camp. Gretchen goes to like smart kid camp. Yeah. Spinelli goes to wrestling camp. It was space their, camp, by the all way. Their Gretchen goes to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gretchen goes to space camp. Vince goes to sports camp, obviously. Yeah. Gus goes to military camp. TJ doesn't do a goddamn thing. He didn't go to camp. He was, he the was one just with like the hat, right? he, yeah. Yes. Okay. The, the hat, the jeans, and the sw- and like the Funny. cardigan. It was a cardigan? Okay, yeah. I think it was a cardigan. I don't know, some whatever kind of it was. It was some kind of sweater it. over it was a t-shirt. It was probably a hoodie. <laughs> it was probably, it was way too hot for him to be wearing that. Yeah, well, that's, what, that's what I always thought about a lot of these, like, animated ones when I was younger. I'm like, how are they running around in a sweater the, in the, the fact summer? that every sing, yeah, everyone else except for Spinelli is wearing, like, athletic clothes or, like, t-shirts. Yeah. And Spinelli's wearing a leather jacket, leggings, and a toque. What? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so they all go to camp. TJ doesn't. Yeah. TJ's parents suggest that he just goes on a play date with Randall, and TJ kills himself. <laughs> he doesn't, but that would no. be the, that would be the real world <laughs> That'd be answer so to that. Dark. <laughs> that would be the real world answer. That would have ruined the recess for, like franchise all <laughs> like that. Would have been how I much your mother pulled, but like yeah. darker. <laughs> yeah. But then uh, anyway, so he doesn't kill himself. He's just like, no, I'm not hanging out with that. Yeah. So he rides by the school one day and sees like some laser come out of it, out to the top because they're testing the laser. The yeah. bad guys are, and then I want to say it was James Woods who plays the voice of like the evil principal, but that doesn't sound right for some I'm reason. Jacking it. Anyway, yeah, so he does. it is James Woods. Yep. Nailed it. He's always the bad guy. Clearly, they didn't try putting candy on <laughs> the ground. Ooh, piece of candy. Ooh, Ooh piece, piece of candy. candy. Can't Ooh, piece of candy. <laughs> Can't believe it worked in a different universe. <laughs> Anyways, so this this James Woods principal, former principal who's on the school board or something, I can't remember. He decides, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of summer vacation. Canada doesn't get summer vacation, which is bullshit. Which is a lie. <laughs> That's Canada, what I Canada's, do remember now. It's like, wait, why? Yeah, why they list like three that? three countries whose whose school scores are higher than the states. So we're gonna get rid of summer vacation by making it cold because it because it snows all the time. And I was oh like, get the fuck God. out of here, James I Woods. I about all these like Canadian stereotypes. <laughs> yeah. So that that's his thing is he's trying to like move the moon so that the orbit changes. And then 
the school gets other kids science stuff <laughs> yeah so so the kids don't get summer vacation anymore and then mr i forget what the principal name was principal prickly he's like uh-uh kids need it because he's the hero and he's a legend in this and him yeah. and tj they team up and I it's kind of weird now. yeah and there's weird. and it's it's like most kids stuff where they act like the kids can solve it because yeah, like, like kids don't understand policing but they have two dick police officers too but uh it's it's a it's a pretty rad movie and I don't toss that word around lightly or ever. Uh I just love that they think like the whole story premise is based off the fact that they think that summer break is only a thing because it's hot during the summer. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's that's oh, oh it's too hot during the summer. If it's cold during the summer, kids got to be in school. Why would they be anywhere else? Yeah. It's like wait, no, that's that's not how it works. <laughs> It uh, just so happens yeah. that that use. I'm I'm sure the history of it is probably just like oh, people used to be farmers all the time, and then they need to be out in the fields tilling because it's hot, and you make hay when the sun shines. Yeah, I'm which is a legit exactly saying. Kind of thing, yeah. So I imagine that's probably why summer vacation started was so that you could be like oh peace out school time to go sweat my nutsack off. Working in the field with my dad. Oh, when it first was like a thing, yeah, I would agree that it was definitely because of summer. But nowadays, it's just like, well, if summer's not hot, that's just global warming. <laughs> like, it's well, you... climate change. <laughs> <laughs> climate change. Just depressing. killed it. Just died. None of us wanted to comment after that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, next up on my list. Yep. Stand by me. I thought that was going to be on your list. I was like, every time I see that like the, that movie on a list, I'm like, Andrew likes that movie, right? You bet your ass I like that movie. Yeah, you do. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Me neither. Because it's, it's got the guy with the best name ever. Will Wheaton. Will Wheaton? Will, Will Wheaton. Wheaton. <laughs> Come on, there isn't even an H in one of those. River Phoenix, Corey Feldman, Jerry O'Connell, Jerry O'Connell, Keith, that's why Kiefer I Sutherland. It. I love Jerry O'Connell. Anyways, yeah. love this movie. Love the Family Guy recap even more, just because Joe starts off being able to walk and then gets hurt, and ends up in a wheelchair anyways, which is hilarious to me. <laughs> is isn't that the one where they're like want to go poke some dead people? I think so. Yeah, yeah, because. Um, Cleveland comes in on, uh, and he's like not acting like over the top. He's like, "Guys, I found a dead body," and they're like, "No, you leave and you come back and you'll be over dramatic '50s black guy." He's like, "Oh my god!" god. And he comes in, and he's like over the top, and we're like, "Ooh, sensitive information," but I like it. Uh, so I guess that means it's my turn then. I have one more. Oh yeah, one more. My bad. Can you guys guess what it is? Probably not. Yeah, no, I got, I got nothing. You got it, Craig? I'm what, sending you vibes, what, Craig. What your last summer movie is that's on your list. Summer movie. It's not working. I'm coming up blank. Jaws. Ah. Okay, yeah. Ah, I should have remembered that. Which is a movie about sharks, but it its main focus is about the beach for 4th of July. And this like summer town, ta- this town that yes, like really which a big is, summer tourism yeah, town, which is a which is a tourism community, which hits close to home, which is why I'm pretty sure there's sharks in the river up here. Not there true. aren't sharks in the river up here. <laughs> there are not sharks. Allegedly, live in Canada. Allegedly, <laughs> you can't. We have freshwater. That. We have freshwater barracuda. Have you seen a- all of the river at all times <laughs> ever? No. <laughs> no, you don't know me. There might me. be Loch Ness monster in there. You you have no idea. Well, I imagine the Loch Ness monster <laughs> is not in. Well, if they, not be, in Loch if they found him in a couple other places, then he'd have a different name. But right now, just Loch Ness monster. So this is a Loch Crow. Just like, just like Canadian geese. It's not. They're not just Canadian. That's true. That's true. They don't have citizenship. I would love to know. They can't carry a passport. <laughs> they don't get passports. Good luck they just getting go where them, the fuck they exactly. want. Exactly. Good luck getting them to sit for a picture too. They'll eat your hand off. They will look smug as shit in the picture, yeah, they though. Will. Just... Imagine that paperwork filled out. Just like, duck shit all I th- over it. I think I look pretty dark and brooding in my 
passport picture, but just imagine the murder in the eyes of a, a gander. Oh dog. my god, Gosh, that thing wants to kill you. A gander just giving you that, giving it's you that good put old that camera down. Gander. Yeah, ooh, puns. Yeah, that's where I thought you were going with it. I liked it. No, I was giving you the legitimate term <laughs> for the for the male goose is a gander, but I also like that you used it as a pun. I thought you were going the pun direction the whole time. <laughs> That's why I thought Scott nope. was laughing so hard. That's why I the, was. The direct <laughs> pun? That's the way I took it, at least. <laughs> oh, I'm just so used to being there. Is so, ah, there being so many puns in this podcast. Puncast. Puncast. So. Anyways, so that is the end of my list. Awesome. Which is the beginning you of mine. Scott. Scott, hit us with some awesome summer movies. Yeah, so the first one on my no list pressure. was also Jaws, and we already talked about that for like four. Talk seconds. about it more. Sharks. I want to hear. Spielberg. <laughs> agreed, the, agreed. The one Spielberg movie that still holds true. There's a lot of Spielberg movies that. Are I was gonna say Raiders still holds true. Yeah, mm. ET kind of holds up on its own. ET, not I've ET. ET can get drowned in a toilet. I mean, <laughs> Mac and me all the way. Does almost die, but anyway. That's Anyways. not what we're yeah. talking about. We were talking That's Jaws, not a apparently. summer movie. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, but no, I just I like Jaws. I rewatched it recently because the Meg came out and so I watched Jaws and I like that one because I think it's like well, the same reason most people like it, but like I particularly liked when I rewatched it that like the idea that it's more than just about like oh, these guys were dumb and didn't close. Well, they were dumb and didn't close it, but it was it was more like there was more reasoning behind it when I rewatched it than when I watched it as a kid. When I was a kid, it was just, oh, there's sharks attacking things. But it was like, rewatching it, you learn that it's like, oh, it's because the city wanted to keep the beaches open. <laughs> I just, yeah. That little extra bit just made me enjoy the movie just a little extra. I don't know why. Yeah, it was because one way. mayor was a dick. <laughs> yeah, which I just, I think adds to the story a lot more because it has that like, it's more of the cause, right? It's like, oh, it, it wasn't just this happens on any beach. It was because they decide not to react the way you're supposed to react when this kind of thing happens, right? And it's like, okay, cool. Which is a scandal of all its own. And yes. then I, I also like that they they take it and they, they kind of throw in, and like you said, when you're young and you watch it, you don't pick up on all the subtle stuff. You just see yeah. the sharks. But you, you find out that there's so much animosity about the fact that he works there. Yeah, like the the main guy drawn a blank on his name. Yeah. Like he he just hates that they're there instead of being on the mainland. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah I agree. I, that's a good point. Like he does have that. I didn't even think of that. But yeah, you're right. He definitely has that kind of like, ugh. Why I don't I didn't even want to deal with this beach, and now I'm dealing with the worst beach problem you can have. A giant. A, I hate sand. Sentient shark. <laughs> And especially since it's like he was like he was like no no we should we should close and then he was told otherwise and he's like okay you guys you're the ones who've lived here forever I don't I don't know this beach that well I guess I'm just trying to pull shit on my ass maybe yeah. maybe shark attacks and nothing yeah so yeah no I I like that those I like those extra bits you pick up in movies and Jaws I think was one of those ones that had a lot of those little things that yeah with a rewatch it's always like you you appreciate more each time you rewatch it because you pick yeah. up on these different little things. You can sink your teeth into it. Nice. Uh, We're going to end on that shark on puns. Jaws. <laughs> shark puns. Next one on my list was The Sandlot. I don't think we talked about this yet today, did we? No? No. No. It's the Sandlot. It was mentioned pre-podcast. Yes, that's what it was, yeah. Um, yeah, so The Sandlot. We've talked about this movie before in like our first episode, but it takes place during the summer. A bunch of kids running around doing ridiculous stuff. This sounds very familiar. I one like of the I'm guys throws like a girl. <laughs> Pardon? So one of the guys throws like a girl. <laughs> yep, back when that was an insult. Yeah, back when that wasn't... <laughs> uh, not an insult anymore. Have you seen softball no. pitchers? Well, that's what I just said, back when it yeah. was exactly. an insult. I know, I was, so, just, I was just continuing on with your <laughs> with your assertion. With thread. Yeah, but no, so Sandlot, it's great. But I, I, I remember Craig mentioning that it terrified him younger, and I feel like that has to do with the dog. Guard me the for dog. life. The dog yeah, under the I damn porch ruined... <laughs> Like I, uh, I still check under porches. Yeah, <laughs> like I ain't walking up to a house without looking under your I, porch. Like I've told the story. I'm sure I told the story on the podcast. 
That was probably the very first episode. Yeah, oh, it sounds cool. familiar. Yeah. A lot. For the people who live behind your parents, used to live behind Beside your parents' my house? parents' house. That's what it was, yep. And, yep. So the ball goes over the fence, you go over to get the ball. And there's a porch there, a wooden porch. It was terrifying. It was Ooh. terrifying. <laughs> no dog, but that isn't... Craig, that Craig still shits his pants thinking I about get, it. Like, thinking about how scary... That's why Craig isn't crazy. wearing pants exactly. right now. Exactly. It's just in case. I knew we were talking about this this week, so... That's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> Oh boy. Yeah, but the Sandlot, that's, yeah. That's fair. That's if you want to hear more of our thoughts on that, go back to that first prequel episode yep. where we talk about childhood ones. Yeah, I would listen have to, more to say back then. To Craig recount the scariest moment of his life. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, but the next thing I had on my list was American Pie 2, just because I was really, really stretching for summer movies I actually had watched. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even think about that one. Yeah, neither did I until I saw it on our list, but they, the guys from the first american pie go away to like a house in the summer and they spend the summer doing like odd jobs and just having a fun time and it's just like yeah no cool it's it's a typical american pie movie it's not great nothing particularly awesome about it, but it's funny if you like those movies it's obviously just as crude as the first one and almost identical obviously. to the first one just takes place in a different place but that's you know comedies from the 90s for your early 2000s <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. I feel like Craig's probably never seen any of the American Pies. I've but I don't tried watch. to watch them. I don't think they're for you. No, I just like I watched a couple no. minutes of one and I just went, nope. That's I have not L- been able to Lily watch. Lily Aldrin was very young. Yeah. I haven't been able to watch that's it since I was like actually the 15. reason I watched it was because Allison Hannigan's in it. In a few of them, yeah, yeah. But then eventually just goes off the rails. And it's just, they were just using the name for attaching it to anything. <laughs> yeah. And Eugene Levy made a lot of money. Yeah, good for him. I respect that yeah. part. Because then, like, cause then like, you're like, he's the, only one who cashed it. he's the only one who cashed in, like really cashed in. And then he, yeah. in well, he's movies. in those movie In those movies, he's like Stan Lee. Because they always tie him in somehow. Yeah, like which in, I like. Was it ba- in Beta House, they they tie him in. Yeah, well, because everyone's like the, the, na- the naked like, mile. Yeah. Like he's the he's like the the winner or whatever. Like he's somehow tied in. Like well, it's because a bunch of them. It's like it's Stifler's cousin or younger yeah. brother, and I think the naked mile. It's, I think Stifler's younger brother or something like that. There's some weird connections, but yeah, no, that's they do, which is kind of enjoyable about it. But I also like, I grew out of that phase of humor. That was definitely yeah. a teenager kind of like. Get to, I don't know. Stupid I don't want to pretend I'm more sophisticated than I am because I'm not that sophisticated. But I definitely was less sophisticated when I was a teenager when it came to certain types of humor. <laughs> you know, like I would watch yeah. those stupid ones. Now I'd just like, now if I tried to watch them, I'd actually just be like, it, what? So it hurt you're my brain. Sa- you're saying like 28 percent of uh, Seth Rogen movies are entertaining. And the other seventy two percent are no because they're all just ball punching jokes. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Like I've definitely grown a little past some of his earlier things and stuff like that. But I've definitely just certain things I'm just like, oh I don't need a like a dick joke or a just a you know like stiffler drinking cum joke, like Ugh. Yeah, like gross. <laughs> more than anything, I'm just like, ugh. Like that's no oh, Ugh. like Ugh. Yeah. and maybe it's just because they like kind of all those movies those in like different spoof movies had very just similar types of jokes and they all just kind of blended together eventually and just there was an oversaturation at one point too like they went yeah. crazy with spoofs and these american pies cause there's so many and i'm just i think that milk was the teat man milk the teat yeah oh. milk it dry yeah till it's dead and it's i don't even know they probably still make direct to dvd because a bunch like Probably. More of them have been direct to DVD than have been in theaters, which is just a sad thing about any movie franchise. They I made think. it was kind of like National Lampoon, right? It just got yeah. slapped onto stuff. Well, it was part of that, part of that, but it was just like over, like you said, oversaturation. Yeah, yeah, just like just they just they they, they caught a little success for us the first couple, and they tried to just drill it into the ground and they were just getting just enough success that it kept rolling along and like when netflix was first coming around i know that like all of them were on netflix at one point so i'm like yeah this makes sense like they're, they're going trade to dvd and netflix back when netflix was only like a couple million users so yeah but i definitely wouldn't watch it again but it was a summer movie that i had watched so that's why i mentioned it <laughs> that's fair that's fair what else uh so i got two more weekend at bernie's which is 
definitely kind of a summer movie because they go to a beach house. And That's fair. It's That's in the fair. middle of the summer because they're supposed to, they want to be on. It's supposed to be there on. It's supposed to be on like long weekend when this all happens, and then okay, yeah. And that's a fun movie, but other than that, I, don't, I can't really see I feel it. like by that by that rule, the recent Christopher Robin movie is a summer movie because it's about going to the going to the summer cottage over a long weekend. See, I, I would count that actually. I would <laughs> I would count that as one because it's very summer themed. The, the the setting of it is like requires that's it to fair. be summer because otherwise it'd be that's a fair. winter one where they're going to a ski lodge. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which would be awesome. Well, I'm sure that's. Gonna I be would the next watch one, that maybe. shit. I don't know how successful. Actually, I don't want to hear Pooh talk about learning how to ski. Like I just, ugh. nope, I don't need it. Or Piglet being afraid of trees. Or weekend at Bernie's. What about Tigger on like two snowboards on, instead of skis? I was thinking one. I was thinking one snowboard on his tail. Just that, like that hopping makes more up and down. Sense. Yeah, that's that's yeah. good. Call. Or a snowshoe, where he yeah. tries it once and then just sinks into the eight feet of snow because <laughs> he doesn't realize that you can't jump. Yeah, it's <laughs> just be weight. <laughs> yep, it's a science taker. God damn it! Or a weekend at Bernie's three, where they go to a <laughs> winter winter chalet with the same dead guy. Is there a third one? No, there's a, there's a, that's what I'm saying. Make it a third oh, okay. one. Okay, okay. Because there's I was a like, sequel. I know there's a for second some one. Some goddamn reason. Yeah, they take him to some um like a, some uh Caribbean island. I think so. To like do something to get some of his to- money, which I kind of approved of at the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at the I don't time. know why. Like I'm, I'm on there, guys. I'm on the the guys carrying around a dead guy. You're on their side. It's you don't know why <laughs> they're committing fraud. <laughs> They're disrespecting a, a lot dead of other man's stuff. Body. Yep. So much stuff, but it's so wacky and so well done. And I give I give super props to the guy who plays Bernie. Like just Yep. Like some of the shit he had to do, especially the second one where he's like voodooed up and a couple the, at one point. Like I think it's is that what happens? I swear there's one remember. point he's dancing on his own. And I think it's something Probably. like voodoo or they put him on like strings or something. I don't know. Are you sure you're not thinking about the Blues Brothers two thousand? Where they all turn into weird like zombies. I could be mixing it up with that. It's very possible. I'm not going to pretend that I have a perfect memory. That's very possible I mix those two scenes up. Because you say that now, and I'm like, it definitely could have been that scene. Because that's what happens. <laughs> Especially when I made that movement, I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, yeah that's yeah, that's Elwood. <laughs> it's Green Elwood or Gray Elwood. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's it man. <laughs> yeah, so I might have mixed those two up. Uh, anyways. Uh, on to the only good thing about Weekend at Bernie's was the references they make to it in How I Met Your Mother with Weekend at Barney's. Yep. And then Robin gets pissed and Barney goes back to sleep and wakes up and goes, oh, Weekend at Barney's too! And then she gets even pissed, more pissed. Yeah, so on to the next thing. The last one on my list. It's uh, called Heavyweights. Which, is that the one with Ben Stiller? It is. And where he's like the counselor at the fat camp? Yeah. He, well, I, think I he don't plays, approve. I think he plays two. <laughs> I like, don't approve. <laughs> I think he plays two characters in it. Which For those is like of you who are listening. And the owner of it too. I'm plus sized. <laughs> yes. And so it's about a plus size camp. Uh, and they kind of torture these kids a little bit. Man, I need uh, to watch this movie. It's. Honestly, this is one my like. This is one of the spots that like I remember not liking Ben Stiller again because he's a bad guy in this one, right? So he's supposed you're not supposed yeah. to like his character, right? So that's the one thing that always sticks out. And then it had Goldberg. It's like him from, and Dodgeball. That's true. That's that's a good point. Yeah, that's another one. This his character is almost identical, really, <laughs> to his character from Dodgeball, just with like without the mustache. It all, they might be connected. Great I mustache. can't remember now. They might be in canon connected, but I just. <laughs> I just remember heavy. I remember watching Heavyweights when I was younger, and it was one of the few camp, like summer camp movies that I ever watched. So that's the only reason it makes my list. I can't approve or disapprove of it, except for I approve of the fact that Goldberg from Mighty Ducks was in it. That's it. And that's okay. yeah, that's the end of my <laughs> Goldberg from Mighty Ducks was in it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's literally the only thing I remember about that movie at all. That and Ben Stiller. Nothing else. I don't. I don't remember what happened to the kids at the camp. I don't remember what the, like, the overall, like, I know they're, you know, trying to stay, you know, tough 
against this mean guy, but that's that's about it. I don't remember where the like where the story goes. I don't know if it ends with some, you know, them saving the camp or whatever. No clue. But I saw it and I needed summer movies, but it's the last one I had. So what'd you guys watch this week? <laughs> Stuff. Craig, I feel like your list is longer than mine. Yeah, Craig, you, you it's, all right. Just start listing them off. <clears throat> all right. So I finished Archer again. 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 Nice. So the new season's going to be added in two weeks. Yeah. Just in time. This is, yep. this was well-timed. Uh, yeah. I didn't even realize I got to the end until there were no more episodes. I hate that. I hate when that happens. That's, I honestly get a little depression for like a day when that happens with me with any series. I was definitely lost. Like that's why there's so much stuff on here because I've just been grasping for things to watch at this point. No, it's like, I get that. I, <laughs> I understand. I that. don't want to watch this. I kind of want something light, but then I end up watching something ridiculous. See, I have a fear of that sometimes, which is why I can't start a new show because I'm like, but then it'll be gone. There's only ten episodes. <laughs> yeah. See, myself personally, like, I'm really like. I'm gonna get to it. I just haven't yet. Oh, there's too many. Because Netflix, those. but like so many Prime, things. like there's so many good looking shows on Prime. Because, oh. and I just I, haven't made it there. Prime, it's it's Prime's not convenient enough to watch. That's the problem. Like I don't know. About I think you. it's because it because it it lulls a lot. And like, like searching the more, on the it more is pe- dumb. yeah. <laughs> well, the more people that yeah, because it gives you and it shows you individual seasons as opposed to having them all like. Yeah, grouped in. together and like you'll if you search, search parks and rec or park parks yeah. and recreation some it only gives you like two seasons yep. yeah and but you, they're, all, and on they're there. all there yeah yeah <sighs> anyways <laughs> we're talking about that no <laughs> anyways so i finished archer i watched nice. uh two tom segura specials um which ones completely normal and mostly stories me too the older ones <laughs> And the reason I watched well, there goes those my fucking list is because I watched Burt Kreischer's new Secret special. Time. Secret That's Time. Was, yeah. yeah. That I wanted to check that one out. I, that was oh, really me. good. Was it okay? Yeah. Um it's I think I think I like him personally because he's he almost sounds like a combination of a couple different he's not, comedians. He's not overly crude either. He's just he just sounds like a bro from. who's just telling yeah, stories. Yeah, he's it, oh, man. That <laughs> Because uh, some of his deliveries is like just ooze Tom Segura. Yeah, well, they're... And then a couple of deliveries ooze Dane Cook. And, like, there was a couple just a couple moments where I was like, man, this kind of sounds familiar. But it all worked out. Exactly. The the pajama bit, like, I... Yeah. It's so funny. That's... And there's another one that I'm drawing a blank on. There's another bit I liked, but I can't remember what it was. Well, he's on Joe Rogan a bunch, so that's why I wanted to check yeah. out his because him and Joe Rogan are good friends. So. You should do it, and he's pretty funny on that. So I, I like I said, I just hadn't realized it had come out yet. I haven't been on Netflix for a couple of days. Yeah, yeah, it came out on Friday. Oh well, then I just missed uh, it. I think so. Yeah. I think Netflix has given up on showing me these comedy specials because I skipped so many. Just of never them. watched them. Well, I've skipped a lot of their most recent well, ones too. But well, it's because I was say, in my defense, they release a lot. It's like one a week, and, and I'm like, I'm not keeping. I don't like comedy are, this much. Most of them are crap. <laughs> well, that's the other reason too. I'm like, well, who's this? Oh, you should be discovering new ones. I don't know. No. No. Give me more. No. Where's Craig Ferguson? I want more of him. <laughs> <laughs> so Bert Kreischer, hilarious. Yeah. Pajamas. Everybody gets pajamas. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody gets pajamas. You get pajamas. Uh what else did I watch? Secret time, my dad shit his pants at a <laughs> at a banana republic. <laughs> that one's good too. That's true. Yeah, he has to convince everybody that it's true too. Yep. Uh <clears throat> I like um I, I like the the one where he's going to the parent teacher conference and he was up till four thirty, <laughs> partying, and he, so he grabs coffee and two diet cokes. Yeah, he grabs the coffee and two diet cokes, finishes cool. the coffee before the uh, before the parent teacher interview starts. So he cracks open the diet coke, and as soon as it hits his lips, he realizes he's got two Coors Lights. Yeah. <laughs> That's a Scott move. Not true. There is no beer in my house <laughs> whatsoever. That's a twenty year old Scott move. <laughs> More accurate. <laughs> Definitely more there accurate. <laughs> First year in Ottawa, Scott, one hundred percent had beers in his fridge. <laughs> so I watched I watched that. I watched a bunch of movies. Um I watched The World's End, the 
Simon, oh, the nice. Simon Pegg movie. Like that. That one's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, um, that one's... Yeah. How would you like the, the switch up of, like, Simon Pegg being a little bit more of the... The, the, the crazy screw person? Up. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was kind of yeah. like... I like I like seeing Nick uh, Nick Frost as the button-up guy. I'm like, I, I don't know why. I just, it's just more fun. Oh, maybe it's because, I, you know, you see the other ones, then you watch this, and it's like, oh, that's a fun switch, but... Yeah. No, I love that movie. Um, yeah, it's good. Once I got to the end of it, just because it's super weird, but, I mean... I've come to expect that now from things that aren't called Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I watched Not Another Teen Movie, which had a lot of <laughs> awesome John Hughes references in it. Yep. Starting with John You Hughes. mean the whole movie? The, the entire movie. <laughs> right down to Molly Ringwald as a stewardess. Like, really. Yep. Especially, and then she, fuck, what was it? She makes a, like, a really snide remark. Like fucking teenagers, yeah. Or something yeah, like she that. makes the her her entire bit in the movie is about how teenagers are dumb, but yeah. that's yeah. how she made all of her yeah, um, all of her money and just all the all the different references. John Hughes High, Anthony Michael Dining Hall, uh, or whatever it was called. I think it was Anthony Michael Dining Hall or something. Either way, it was Anthony Michael Hall, but had the function of the room on it. Um, the I think one of my one of my favorite bits, and it's just so dumb, is I forget his name. I want to say it's like Bubba or something like that, or like Big Steve, Little Ray, whatever it is. The dumb football player. Yeah, the one who's with got the, the concussions. The one that they're counting down the concussions on the scoreboard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like if he gets one more, you'll die. <laughs> so they just duct tape him in between two <laughs> linemen. Yeah. Coach says it's okay if I'm bleeding from the ear. <laughs> And then uh, Mr. T is just a super wise janitor. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, throw yourself. Believe in the football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's there's a lot of sets that, that overlap. Um, yeah. Especially the uh, the Breakfast Club detention in the library. That entire thing yeah. overlaps down to the costumes, which I thought was funny. Like on purpose. Don't. Yeah, with the with the principal. Yeah, with the principal from yeah. from the Breakfast Club, and the yeah. one kid's dressed up like Judd Nelson. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> with the gloves and every the, the hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the Asian kid, isn't it? No, no, that's um. What's his name? It's it's not. It's. No. I'm. Oh no 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 no. Okay, I know what you're talking I about. I can't yeah. remember. I didn't pay that much attention to the movie <laughs> to be able to tell you character names. Yeah, I just know that I enjoyed it enough. The overlapping jokes in it are exactly. unbelievable. Exactly. Like even just right off the bat, when Chris Evans walks in and like they show the picture of him like doing the the this, yeah. and then he does the that, and it's the exact <laughs> same picture from right then. And there's a picture awesome. across the hall of him looking at his picture of himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then they it's it's oh, so they good. play on yeah. all the uh, on all the teenage movie tropes. Like the girl with yep. the ponytail and the glasses, and as soon as, as, soon as she takes yeah. off the ponytail and the glasses, that's that's it. Yeah. You find out it's Lexi Gray, aka Kara Danvers' sister. <laughs> that's my favorite. Like this is one of the few spoofs I'll actually still watch, like spoof yeah. movies, because it, it's just it is gold. It was before spoof well, movies it, went downhill. <laughs> I, I think it, it starts off with a uh, with an American Pie reference. I think. Yeah. Where she's on her birthday, where she's. She's watching a video. I, th- I feel like it's like sixteen candles or something, some something related. And I think it, she's. It might be a mix of a couple because I know that was also a little bit, you know, a little bit American Pie. Because I know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, like when her. Yeah, where he's where he's like mm, cranking it, <laughs> but she's like. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a, a female euphemism for she's for cranking pollinating it. her flower <laughs> 30 yes and then grandma walks in yeah, everybody walks in <laughs> and grandma walks in oh uh, yeah that's a good one what's next on your list craig on my list i also watched inglorious bastards for the first time oh the first that's i've never seen that movie before Huh, okay. What'd you I, think? I liked it. It was it was interesting. It was kind of weird. Um, yeah. <laughs> I discovered that I really like Christoph Waltz. Yeah, he's great. He's <laughs> great, and, and now I keep seeing him everywhere. 
and everything <laughs> yeah. he's in, I'm like, man, he's such a good actor. Like, insane. That was what, oh, what movie was it for me? It wasn't that movie for me with him, but there was another one of his movies where I'm like, that's where I, that exact same thing happened to me. Where I'm like, yeah. oh, I really like this guy. Oh, he's in everything. Well, the- yeah, f- <laughs> fucking Blofeld, man. Like Blofeld, he's the that perfect. Was that was Blofeld. The yeah, well, that okay, was it. So that yeah. was I was gonna make a point about how it's crazy that in Inglorious Bastards he is the bad guy, and yep. yet I absolutely loved his performance. Oh yeah, he's he's an incredible he's actor. So even good. in he's so even charismatic. In that he's just old like- Cineplex video game commercial he used to be in. <laughs> Like the fire dragons or whatever I it was. I vaguely remember that. <laughs> I like that amazing. he just doesn't always like. I feel like he doesn't a hundred percent take himself a hundred percent seriously, no. right? Like he he takes his job seriously, but he's willing to goof around a little Be bit. Be ridiculous, exactly. Yeah. And I just I like that about any like kind of more like he seems like a more sophisticated actor. So I like that they yeah. he's a type who will like loosen it up a little bit. So yeah. well, I like that he just. Whenever he plays the bad guy, like he's just he's always slimy. Yeah. Like he's always like I'm doing this for I work for this guy, yeah. but I'm doing it all for like me personally. Like in Inglorious Bastards, like you guys were just he's saying, he's a really good yeah. detective. Or, that's that's why he does it. He says that in yeah. the movie is I'm really good at yeah. finding people. Just so happens I'm finding Jews. Yeah. <laughs> but then you go over to the uh, the Tarzan movie that came out a couple years ago too. He plays the bad guy in that where he's working for the king of Spain or oh, something. Now I'm gonna watch. He works that. for whoever, and like his whole job is like trying to just find something in in wherever. Yeah. And then Tarzan's like, Mm-mm, can't no. stop, gotta stop it. And then Margot Robbie's like, I'm in this movie too. And you're like, oh man, goddamn. Uh, and then you get so distracted good. by Margot Robbie apparently. <laughs> Uh, but that's how I ended up not not Margot Robbie, but uh, Christoph Waltz is how I ended up watching Downsizing. <laughs> if I wanted to see Margot Robbie in a movie, is he is he in that? He is in Downsizing. He plays oh, um, oh. he plays Matt Damon's upstairs neighbor in uh, Leisure. Okay. Man. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, I almost watched that because it just got added to Netflix. So I'm assuming that's why you watched took it. a really weird turn, and I don't want to ruin it for Ooh. you. But it's not what I expected out of the movie. Granted, I never saw the trailer, and I really didn't know what I was walking into. But, oh. <laughs> but Matt Damon gets a pass. Like, were you aware that it's about people being drunk? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I okay. knew, I knew that's, that. Money. That's as far as I've been. <laughs> okay, like, I've seen good. Because it but, like, takes a weird damn turn. Oh. Like, but not in like a not in like a negative weird, and not even in like a good weird. It's like a passive weird. It's like you're expecting this movie to go on one thing, and then something happens, and then it just takes this weird sideways path, and then it kind of gets to the end. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It, I'm curious. It, yeah. I was I, I was completely not expecting it to go the direction that it did. Yeah, um, well that's why I haven't gotten to it yet. I thought it was just, you know, cliche. Yeah, no, it's oh, not. Yeah. It takes a it takes a really weird, strange turn with an uncomfortable scene in it. And uh Ooh. Yeah. The best accents ever. They got Norwegian people. Oh, it sounds <laughs> awesome. It's like the <laughs> Swedish chef, except they're speaking English. Exactly. <laughs> they got one one Norwegian technician trying to explain something and like that's all I could think of. I didn't even hear what he was saying. He was talking about something and it's just like, nope. I I just hear your accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I well, watched I I recommend you watch it at least once. Yeah, I'll check it out. It, I probably yeah. won't watch it again, but if you're on the fence on it, it's not a bad movie. Yeah, it's, I had added it to my list, so the yeah. fact that you kind of like just, say there's a little twist in it, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm yeah, curious a little bit yeah. to find you're out You're watching what it the is. movie, you're like, okay, I, I see where this is going. And the last time I watched you in a film, Matt Damon, you ended up killing people. But, oh, uh, damn. well, I watched Suburbicon last. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, what movie is that? And it's, <laughs> he does not kill in oceans. Nope, he kills in Suburbicon. Uh, well, I was thinking The Martian. So like, it, <laughs> it feels like it like to me it felt like it's kind of going on that like it starts off in the oh everything's great kind of theme yeah and then it it's not a huge turning point but it has a turning point and then from there on things are strange but that's when christoph waltz comes in and they're not related like the the strange <laughs> and christoph waltz are not entirely related to each other he's just there and awesome yeah it's just part of the setting <laughs> and i started watching ali g into house and I wasn't sure yes. how I was going to enjoy that, 
but and now I can't remember his name. Martin Freeman. Sasha Baron Cohen. Martin Freeman is in that movie. <laughs> and it's the most not Martin Freeman character I think I've ever seen, and that's gonna be the reason why I watch it. That's that's gonna be the reason why I finish it. Have either of you seen it? I No, I, I don't like Sasha Baron Cohen. Oh, yeah, so I've never seen okay. anything with Sasha Baron Cohen in it before. I've never watched any of his stuff because like I remember I think that was a show before that movie, if I'm yes. remembering correctly. Yeah, and I remember seeing clips from that show or like scrolling past that show and not liking it. So I just kind of always I've just kind of always been put off by that like his brand of humor. Well, yeah. The I, only Sasha Baron Cohen character I didn't mind was in Les Mis, where he plays the the keeper of the house, and that's it. <laughs> that is that is the only pass he gets from me. <laughs> that's because it wasn't his character. <laughs> yeah. Did. <laughs> The, I think the only reason I'll actually finish it. So they're, the concept is that they're they're suburban gangsters in England. Yeah. But they're not really. Because they're they're they're, they're, yeah. they're well, yeah. it's England. They're, they're and they're and they're and they're posing as it. They think that they're yeah. really they think they're really tough and their neighborhood's got it hard and they all wear yellow all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't not wear yellow cuz you'll be confused as another member of a different gang and like it's it's they do the east side west side hand signals and it's just oh it's kind of ridiculous but the fact that martin freeman's in it is about the only reason i'm gonna actually finish it because i I wouldn't have because he's just ridiculous in this movie well yeah i'm slightly curious now like that you're saying about martin freeman because i enjoy him and i'm like hmm yeah him him not playing himself exactly him playing something is very intriguing Cause he's very always Martin Freeman. <laughs> exactly. So like, in everything he's in, he's kind of the, like a little bit on the buttoned up side. Yeah. Like no matter what. He's, he's like a cliche British dude. Like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the buttoned up, always like, where's my spot of tea? Even in, uh, even in Fargo, he manages to accomplish that. And there he's just killing people and being nervous. Um, <laughs> so I watched that. Now, the next two things are the most important things on my list. One of which is not the one I teased at the beginning of the episode. Have either of you got a guess for what I may have watched? No, I did. No? Uh, explained? Well, I watched Explained. Do you okay. know? Well, that's, that's not the... That's not the uh, well, that was just missing awesome from your thing. list. Yep, yep. So I watched Explained. This week's episode, the very informative, informative subject of the female orgasm. The only episode I've watched so far. So I learned some stuff. <laughs> it was important. It was interesting. Everybody no, actually, watched it, that episode. It got it like I've been meaning to watch that show. It's been on my list. This is the first topic. I was like, okay, I could I, I could probably learn a thing or two. Yeah, I definitely did. Yeah, that'll that'll get you sucked in for the rest of them. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, you're, you're right because I have been meaning to like get to the I've. Do you want to check out a couple of the only ones you mentioned? I'm not Extra interested terrestrial. in all of them. The racial, um, the racial wealth that gap one, yeah. is pretty good too. That one's yeah. really good. That's that what one, sucked I'm me not in interested. That was the first I'm like episode. not interested in K-pop. <laughs> surprisingly, I th- I've said it before um, on here. The surprisingly, their episodes are all really interesting, even if I'm not interested in the subject. Like I don't care about K-pop, but it was interesting yeah. to learn about K-pop. Yeah, I know what you mean. When you don't understand it, or something like... Um, oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> the Like the exclamation mark and, and things like that, where it's not something you necessarily think about, wanting yeah. to know about, but they've got the episode. Like, never in a million years would I have been like, you know what I really need? A 20-minute documentary on the female orgasm. Never would have occurred to me, but it happened. <laughs> what? No, I was just, that's why that's my first thought. I'm like, wait. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. So that was it was good. It was informative. I learned some yeah, things. Yeah, that wasn't what you were talking about. I learned some things. <laughs> uh so the last thing on my list. I watched Justice League Dark. Oh. On the weekend. <laughs> You are right. I would Holy have never guessed shit. that ever. <laughs> it's amazing, is it not? It was really good. <laughs> Fuck yes. Where Batman scares ghosts? Exactly. And that one I feel Boo. it's ah! it's a good intro I think into it too cuz it's not like it is very like it's super, it's more supernatural than superhero. Like it's not too heavy. It's not like all the superheroes. Yeah. 
yeah. that's the focus. It's just the, yeah. the dark magic ones. Exactly, which I really like that idea. Sexy ass Zatanna. Because I close my eyes and I just picture Smallville Zatanna. Yep. <laughs> Swamp thing's a badass. Oh, uh, like, I like I like that they used. Is the, wait, is that the same one that they use? Um, yeah. Etrigan, because I love Etrigan. Well, there's that. I was talking about the. I meant the voice of John Constantine's the same as from the. Um, yeah, yeah. The show, right? He's the he's the yeah. only John Constantine. Now. He has been all John Constantine outside of Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Was there no animated one before he took it on then? I guess he didn't uh, actually. Is wait, not off the top is of my head. there might have been Darkest Justice first League. animated appearance? Might have been. I don't think. I don't think they use him in uh, the Justice League cartoon. I can't remember. Well, I was thinking like I wasn't sure if he was in like one of the movies before, but now that you're saying that, I'm like, I don't think he was actually. No. You're drawing a complete blank on that, huh? No, that's the first time. That's cool though. So but anyways, Craig, yes, you Justice League Dark. I just we I derailed did. that a little bit. <laughs> I watched it. I liked it. Are you going to watch more DC animated ones? Because we'll see. Netflix has a couple of them. Yeah. Not all of them, it depends it on It depends on if they catch my eye or not. That one kind of caught my eye, and I remember you guys maybe referencing it. And Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and so I was like, hmm, maybe I'll give this a shot, see what it's like, surprise the heck out of them on the podcast. Why not? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mind blown. <laughs> yes, very surprised. <laughs> so since it's not like this week was, like, themed for a superhero or something. It's nope. just... Yeah. Just decided I wanted to watch it. Yeah, just Craig just makes volition. good decisions sometimes. Sometimes I make good decisions, and sometimes I start watching Ali G. <laughs> yep. What can I say? That sounds accurate. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> so, who wants to tell me what they watched this week? Do you have a long list, Scott? No, mine's three. Okay, cool. Mine's a little longer. You go you ahead, want, then. Want me to go get yeah, mine yeah, over? Yeah, you get yours okay, over, so. and I'll wrap it up quickly after. So as Craig said, we watched Tom Segura and <laughs> Burt Kreischer. Three things on the list. That's pretty good yeah. for not talking about it. Three out of three out of six. <laughs> we didn't even mention it. Uh, nope. So I watched The Meg this weekend. Oh, okay, cool. What'd it you think was of that? surprisingly decent. Surprisingly okay. decent. It's weird to see uh, Jason Statham with a character who shows a lot of humility. Oh, yeah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> yeah, he's not just, like he's a badass, but he's also like he's got a like a really soft side, huh. which is weird to look at. I don't even know how to, I couldn't even imagine that. Like literally cannot imagine that. <laughs> no, it was it was super bizarre. But uh no, it was a pretty decent movie. Like it's I didn't expect it to blow me away, blow me out of the water, so ah. to speak. Yep. <laughs> yep. But uh like I I I'm not going to rush out and buy it when it comes out. Okay. But I'm going to buy it when it comes out eventually. Yeah, you'll Watch get it, it again. Eventually. Like, there's a couple twists in it where you're like, okay, well, I, you know, I, I kind of saw that coming. Like, it had to have happened. Yeah. But uh, there's one thing in it, though, that kind of bugged me. They're out there fighting this gigantic, like, yeah. the largest shark in history, the Megalodon, okay? Yeah. They've come up against against one before and then they come up against another one okay all right spoilers <laughs> they come up against it and there's this kid like su was it su yin bing bing lee who is the gorgeous oriental woman in the movie like she's the second main character yeah, yeah. she's a fucking badass she's a co-lead yeah i don't know she's been in yes. a couple things i think she yeah. was in one of the x-men no no i'm getting that mixed up with the character's name she was in something else, though. <laughs> she was in Transformers. Transformers. Age, that's Age what of it Extinction. Was. I was thinking one of that's the big franchises. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I recognized. I knew she was from yeah. something else because when I heard she was coming into this one. But anyways, two megalodons. Anyways. Yeah. So they're going up against the second one. Yeah. And they go on the ship because they're like, you know what? We're the only way. You know, the military is not going to listen to us. They think we're pranking them. We're the only ones who can save the save the world from this shark. So they load up the team. No, none of like the security, none of the other people. Only the scientists on the team. They load them onto the ship, and I'm like, okay, I can live with this. Like they got to know how to use computers to track it, whatever. Yeah. But they bring the kid, who's like an eight year old kid, 
Yeah. And, it's, and the daughter is a main focal point of the story, which I accept that entirely. Yeah, but... But leave her behind on have to the rig her, you were yeah. just on, yeah. where she's safe. Don't bring her out in the middle of the ocean with the giant shark. Yeah, Where the it. giant shark lives. I don't like this idea, though. Like, it kept implying that you gotta save the... Like, I haven't seen it, but, like, some of the trails imply you have to save the Earth from the Megalodon. I'm like, oh, no, I'm safe. It ain't getting me up here in Canada. I'll go in That's the ocean. It. I'm fine. <laughs> I, well, if, if there's a megalodon with all of the Jaws sharks in Crow Bay here. <laughs> yeah, hey, never tr- going in. Trent River. <laughs> so you made never you just joke again. about that and I don't jump in the Trent River. <laughs> yeah. Never again. I'm done. Never again. <clears throat> I did that once. There was, there was too much seaweed. Too much seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, punk. But no, it was it was a good movie, but just stupid stuff like that. They're yeah. just in like overlooked issues. Gotcha, yeah. But uh, outside of that, the only other thing I watched this week was, can you guess? No, I'm trying to blank. Jaws. No, it was, no, it was the Lion King one and a half. Oh. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I would have guessed that. <laughs> you wouldn't have. Yeah, no. That, that was the date night movie the other night. Okay, I was like, why? <laughs> that was going to be my next question. <laughs> not like a why Just bad, cause. but like, it's a random, it's not like Why'd you a watch connection. it? <laughs> Why did you... All of the questions. All of the questions. I lied. That wasn't the only other thing I watched. I also watched an episode of CSI. Wait, which one? Like, which CSI which or C- which episode? Yeah, yes. Which CSI? Well, first, which CSI? Okay. CSI Crime Scene Investigation. Ooh, which era? Original. Uh, the Ted Danson. The era. Season obviously. 14, I've, I believe. Yeah, I've never seen one with him. That's, that's why I had to He's, narrow it down. He's a weird character because he's just a normal dude who just happens to be in management. <laughs> yeah. Love Ted Danson, though. Love Ted Danson, though. Love Ted Danson. Yeah, but I cannot watch CSI. I believe I texted you about that the other yeah, day. Yeah, you did. Craig. Now I know why you did. <laughs> now you know why. I was just like, Ted Danson is the man. Yeah, the only man. The only man. Ted Manson. I just assume that's how you two said Ted hi. Manson. <laughs> Hashtag Ted Manson. <laughs> That's like, Scott, that's like you're in my, you're yeah. me saying dude. I thought that's Craig, what you guys Craig did. and I, it's just Ted Danson. Yeah, Ted Danson. And then whatever you have to Ted say. Ted Danson, what you doing tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Ted Danson, wh- when's the game on the weekend? <laughs> Ted Danson, what time are you getting to BMO Field? Theisman. Theisman. <laughs> Ted, and it's just a picture of Ted Danson. Exactly. Bring everything full circle. Yep. But uh, the episode, it was a, it was a, um, chess episode okay and it has the super creepy russian dude from ant-man okay right on he's in who also i forgot he's in the dark knight he plays the one like uh insane asylum guy who's dressed up as a cop oh who, okay who batman and harvey harvey yeah, are yeah. interrogating and harvey's like gonna break his rule and just pop the guy batman's like we don't do that and you're like ah Christian, what are you doing? Robotasa? <laughs> Robot? Dude, you, y'all need a lozenge? Bat lozenge. I would buy bat lozenges. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Pfeiffer thought she could mess with the Batmans. But uh, anyways, that's that's all I watched this week. Okay, right on. I thought you had more. Oh, but nope, yeah, it's because it, three of them were grouped, that's why. Anyways, I didn't watch much mm-hmm. this week besides, you know, I watched all my usual stuff, but we won't talk about that because you guys can go to our YouTube channel and see me talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but what I did watch this week was I checked out The Dark Tower because the library sent it to me, uh, and okay. it was the first time I checked it out. Is it is it any good? I don't... I had a have, crisis of, like, personality when I books. watched this. I haven't read the book, so that's why I was like, Okay, maybe it's that because I liked it. I didn't like dislike. Like, I didn't like love it. But you didn't it. have necessarily a, f- a frame of reference to compare it to. Exactly. So that part I could kind of get if it doesn't connect to the source material. Those people being upset about it, but the like the fact that this didn't just take off as a action film kind of baffles me a little bit. Just because Idris Elba's pretty badass in it. He just, uh, he's in general. He is the well, motherfucking he is in general. Man. But like that's what I mean. Though, like I don't get how he didn't like bring this movie up a lot. Like I don't. I'm confused as how I this think movie turned into such maybe a like. Part of the problem is that it got billed as the Stephen King movie. 
and that's possible like like i said i like i didn't go to see this in theaters either like because i wasn't that interested to go see it but i was curious enough and then when you know all there was a lot of like i wouldn't say a lot but like a decent amount of like negative feedback on it that i was like oh okay i don't have to rush out to go see that anytime soon but then i'm watching it i'm like this isn't that bad like i'm glad to hear that because the only reason i haven't watched it and like we know i love me some matthew mcconaughey exactly yeah he's great he can do no wrong he's just a villain he says stuff you're like why are you saying that (laughs) it's matthew mcconaughey (laughs) because he can because he can okay again it's his character (laughs) yeah i'm glad i'm glad to hear that maybe i'll check it out then yeah so like yeah i'd like to watch it too i read the first set of the series that it's supposed to be based on Okay, it's like I said, I don't know if it connects in very well. I think when it was coming out, I heard that this is supposed to take place after the books, but don't quote me on that. Uh, that's just the okay. that's the impression I remember getting beforehand, and I think that was part of the resistance too. Like people thought this was going to be about the books, and it ended up being like a prequel, pretty much, or not a prequel, okay, kind of like an epilogue a in a sense. Yeah, yep. well, more like a like it just it takes place after. I don't know, like, because I don't know what the books are particularly about and i'm pretty sure it just takes Super place after weird. those events yeah well and well, it's it, stephen king yeah <laughs> yeah but it's not like a lot of stephen king is is very 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 horror and this mm-hmm. is not really a horror movie or not oh, sorry yeah. not a not a horror series it's just super weird yeah which That's i fair. feel maybe didn't 100 percent transfer over because this, this movie was a little weird but i wouldn't put it like i've seen some weirder ones like yeah, well, that, I, that one, that that one where Channing sense. Tatum's got ear. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Uh, well, I mean, more so like, it for what the premise was. I'm like, no, this all fits for the most part. It's like, yeah, okay, this weird world, this kid going to this portal. Okay, yeah, but yeah, no, I don't like. I just this movie made me think. Like, am I bad movie critic? Like, do I not know what a good and bad movie are? Because like, just like between this and some other movies that I'm just like, oh, I didn't think this was that bad. Or am I just liking things because other people didn't like them? I don't know. Whoa. These are the thoughts this I have. A journey of, <laughs> this is a journey of self-discovery. <laughs> yeah, these are the thoughts this movie made me discover. But uh, I also watched, because there was another movie I also watched this weekend that tied in with that, which was The New Mummy with Tom Cruise. Okay. Which I didn't think was that bad either. <laughs> which, again, this is, this is why I'm coming back to, like, I don't know if I, this like, do I have bad taste in movies? Like... Because I love Batman v Superman. We all know the but world like doesn't. You too. shut the fuck up. That movie is amazing. Like movie and too. we both know I agree with that, but the world doesn't agree with I that. I constantly I'm defend trying. that at work, which disappoints me because there's one guy looking at you, Dylan. <laughs> that keeps you out talking Dylan, about you, that Dylan. That keeps trying to hate on it. And it's like what? What are I gotta know though? It, well, it's total not, sidebar. It's not Marvel. It's what are not, his reasons? It's not Marvel. <laughs> Marvel is better, and therefore. Nothing by DC can be as good as Marvel. He doesn't really give a good concrete reason. Yeah, That's a shit argument. So I don't like give him concrete people. reasons back. I'm like, I like it because like it's me. artistically awesome. Like, look That's at like it. That's like if I... It's all dark. If I, look at those camera like, angles shooting from above a door all the time. Look at the use of those shadows. Exactly. Everywhere. It's awesome. Look at the fact that the shadow, like the, the different light usage reflects what the conversation is exactly artistically it's a superior it's a, it's a masterpiece film. yes <laughs> but anyways to get off anyways. of batman v superman oh, i God. watched the new mummy and didn't think okay. it was super terrible <laughs> and so yeah so between these two movies i watched i'm like do i have bad taste in movies because this like i thought this like i could see why some people may have been hesitant to this this was a little bit of a tom cruise movie but it had uh, and I also get, like, people don't love this whole, oh, this is a franchise before you even watch the first movie. I think that's where this movie really fell flat in this dark universe that was supposed to happen fell flat is that they were, like, you know, they were, what's what's the expression? They were, uh, they didn't bite off more than they could chew, but, like, their their eyes were bigger than their, no, that's not the Stomach. right one. I don't know what the expression I'm looking for is. The point was is they didn't, like, they thought one thing and the real thing was another thing. Which makes zero sense now. I'm trying to say these things yep. out loud. My point is, is that I thought the moment was okay, and I want to see Russell Crowe back as 
as Dr. Uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde again because he was the best in it. Because Russell Crowe's awesome. He's so awesome, especially as Hyde. He's just got this like Cockney British accent that's just I don't know. And he just it was, I just enjoyed it. I don't know. I yeah. Again, I'm having a crisis of personality of, or whatever you call it, being like, do do I have bad taste in movies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then that comes existential that's a, crisis yeah thank you so like just that's also a subjective thing like oh what's well, a good movie da, da, da. but you know what i mean like i'm just like why do i like movies that so many other people don't like <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, i would probably if you have guys haven't seen the mummy i'd say check it out just to just because i'm curious what your guys' thoughts are. if you guys haven't already seen it that is cause now i'm just assuming i it. own it you I have own not it. seen it yeah so maybe you should I'd put this on the same one as, like, The Dark Tower. I'm, like, I'm confused as to why they were considered such big flops. Or, like, I don't know if that's just because budget-wise or, you know, reception-wise. But I feel like, I just feel like my feelings about this are just very different than the general consensus. And that's, so I'm curious particularly about now The Mummy, uh, what you guys think of it. So, yeah. I will watch it and get back to you by next week. I promise. Cool. There was one cool thing in The Mummy I did write down, which is they did have the Book of the Dead from the Brendan Fraser mummies make a little little appearance. Just Oh, did it? Just, awesome. just someone, like, picks it up or moves it, and that's it. Like, it was just on a table, and someone, but that's all I needed. That's all I want. You know, sometimes it's like, yeah, perfect, great. And, you know, they say The Mummy in the name in the movie, so I like it often because of that. Obviously. So, but anyways, Obviously. yeah. Uh, but the last thing I watched just was I started rewatching the first season of Iron Fist just because I've got a week until the second season comes out, and I want to refresh myself on it. Rewatching it, and it's a little slow. Uh, I'm gonna, yep. Yep. These ones it are, starts off. Yeah, terribly. it starts off a little slow, but at the same time, like uh, watching it this time, knowing that like. Um, Finn Jones, who plays Danny Rand, only had like very short time to do a lot of the chore, uh, the chore, chore, choreography. choreography. Thank you. Yes, yeah, word just wasn't coming out. I was saying choreograph. No, that's not the right word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the choreography, he didn't have as much time with it. So when I was rewatching it, keeping that in mind, I'm like, oh, this is he does an okay job considering he wasn't like training for months beforehand. He was kind of just throwing on it once he showed up to a set, which wasn't his fault per se. Uh, but my point being is that just rewatching, it's kind of just interesting to kind of put those pieces that you get from, you know, after show has been done for a little bit and he's had two other appearances since then. So I don't know if that's also clouding my judgment of rewatching the first season, but calling, calling wings, just awesome. She always remains awesome. So we'll just leave it at that. And that's all I watched this week. Besides my normal Look stuff. Look at that. Yes. Nailed it. Nailed it. End of the episode. We did right. it. We did it. I got nothing else to add. Cool. Let's just say summer thanks movies. for listening, guys. Summer mm, movies. Yeah. Email us with your favorite summer movies. If any of you yeah. made it this far. Engage. <laughs> Engage with us on social media. Please. And let's just social media. Just don't don't come interact with us in real life. I don't want we're that. We're looking to <laughs> we're looking for friends. I am antisocial as shit. <laughs> yes. Online friends, please. But online, yes, because yes. I can block you if I need to. Wow. <laughs> I'm See kidding. you guys next week if we all make it through allergy season. I yes. wouldn't hold my breath on that. I might not have a, I might not have a choice though. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.